what's up? I'm Miss Mila Rose and today I'm going to be giving you a basic tutorial on how to use one of my favorite programs, Filmora. I highly recommend this program because it is fairly easy to use and it covers the basics of what you would need to do with your clips. So one of the things that I love about using Filmora is it actually has a built-in screen record. So I can just hit record at the top here and then click record PC screen. And just hit start and then it starts recording in five seconds. So now my PC is recording, so I'll show you guys a little bit of how I edit my clips. Now the first thing you're going to want to do when you open up your program is to import your clips. So just go to import, import media files, find the directory of your clips, and then just select them. And then you can right click, add to project, or you can drag it to your timeline. Now taking a look at your program, you have media, which is going to be the files that you import, your music. They have a lot of music that you can use, but you can also go to No Copyright Sounds on YouTube and they have quite a lot of songs that you can import to your clips if you want to use them. There's text, so you can make titles for your clips, intros and outros. Transitions. These ones are good to add in between your opening and endings and your clips if you add those. You have a lot of filters if you want to do some color editing, overlays, some more color editing, elements. These are just pip overlays that you can import to your scene, to your clip, but you can also make your own. They just need to be PNG transparent clips. You can also do a split screen. So if I import a secondary clip, choose this one. You just drag and drop and then hit OK. Hey babe, what's up? It's Miss Mila Rose. And then you have a split screen. So what I like to do with my clips is I like to make an intro and outro. So I actually have pre-made intros and outros right here. I save them out and I reuse them for my clips. I have my watermark at the bottom and I'll show you how to import that as well. I have my opening title. I have some music at the bottom. And then my outro with my social medias. So I'll just put my video here. And then I'll also have to move my sound to the end of my clip for the outro. And the way you import a watermark is like this. After you already made a watermark, import it to your program software, add it to your pip. You can drag it to the start of your clip and then drag it to the end of your clip. You can have it fade in by giving it this animation here. So when you press play, it fades. And then you're going to want to resize it and locate it somewhere else on your scene because obviously you don't want it taking up the entirety of your scene. So you can just hold shift so that it retains its scale and then drag it down and move it into the corner or wherever you want to put it. Some people like to put it in this corner. Some people don't like to put their name at all. So I actually have a secondary watermark that I made. Right here. And the way you make a watermark is you just, well at least I use Photoshop. And then you can just make a transparent image and then save it as a PNG so it remains its transparency. You don't have to make a transparent image, but mine is circular, so I do, I do have to make it transparent for it to look decent. A good rule of thumb is to keep your original clips as well. So that's how you add a watermark to your clips. So after you have an intro and outro, if you even want to do that, you can add transitions to make it smoother rather than just a choppy cut. So 
There's a lot of transitions that you can use that are already in the software. Kind of just pick whatever you want. I like to use blind or erase slide. Sometimes dissolve is nice too. So you just apply it. And then you can also drag this so the animation is shorter or longer. So you have two music layers here. And to do that, all you have to do is import some music, add it to your project, and since there are two music layers, you can drag it to whichever layer you want. If you drag it to one that already has music on it, it'll overwrite it, so careful not to do that. With the music, you can add a fade in and fade out so the audio gradually increases in sound or gradually decreases when it fades out. You can change the pitch. If you have static in your clips, you can actually do something kind of nifty. So let me show you. You can actually do an audio detach on your clips as well so that you can get into the audio and edit it much better for the fade ins, the fade outs, the volume, you can change the speed. So if you remove the background that noise, this is how it sounds. Let me turn up my volume so you guys can hear it. And you can also increase the volume of your playback here. So if I play it back for you guys. Hi babe, I'm Miss Mila Rose and welcome back so then if I want to do the remove background noise, I don't really have any in this clip, but let's do and see what it does with the week. My YouTube channel. Um, so it kind of makes it sound a little robotic, which is like why I don't like using it, but if you have a lot of static, doing the week remove background noise can be actually beneficial sometimes to your clips. If I do strong, this is what it sounds like. Promise, I'm going to be talking about so it sounds quite robotic when you actually make it strong like that. So when I make my intros and outros, I always add text to the layers. And there's one layer of text that you can see right here. And their text options are right here. So I can easily just take this out, add in any text that I want. So with this one, I used, I believe it was this particle. And then you can just go to edit. You can change the font type here to make it a little fancier or more plain and simple. You can always edit them with the colors selection each of them. So yes, this one is preset to yellow. You can change it to black. Uh, if I go into advanced, I can mess around with even more settings. So there's color fill. You can make it gradient fill. You can make it image fill. You can change the effect here. Opacity is just if it's see-through. Blur. There's a lot of settings that you can mess with in the advanced and then the animation. You can choose fade for a simple one. Fly in and fly out, kind of a little more crazy. And then of course the font and the size is here with the bold, the highlights, whether you want it center or not. So I'm just going to do something very basic. I really like this font right here. Oops. And then I like to make the color either white or off-white, a little gray. You can also hold shift and drag the corners so that it remains its scale. And then you can easily center it using these helpful guidelines. And then just select the box, control A to select all the letters. You can put whatever you want. And then you can change the font to whatever you want as well. And 
and then this is how it looks. So if you want to mess with the color editing, as you can see, I heavily did in these clips here. This is what you do. Double click on your clip, hit advance, and then you have a lot of settings that you can mess with. If you want a more advanced program that will do this, I highly recommend DaVinci Resolve, but it is quite a complicated program. So if you want to just mess with some of the basics for color editing, Filmora works fine for that. So you can mess with the temperature. Sometimes if you want to make it a little warmer, you can add some more yellow, change the tint. For this, they have presets, so they have some pretty interesting ones. Select none, you can select whatever they have available if you want to use them. I personally like just messing around with my own. You can make the exposure higher, so to increase your video brightness. A good rule of thumb for contrast is if you're increasing your brightness, you generally want to decrease your contrast. It's what I learned in a Photoshop class in college. So you can increase your saturation. The difference between saturation and vibrance is if you have some really popping colors, like for my red lipstick or my hair color, it'll pop those colors out a lot more than if I was doing just saturation alone. So I can make it quite saturated if I wanted to and get the colors popping with the vibrance. The lights will be more of the lighting, so you can mess with the brightness and the shadows. It just all goes deep into the color schemes, so you can mess with a lot of different colors. You can really pop certain colors, so for example, if I touch the red, it'll probably mostly affect my lips and my hair just because it's going to be affecting those colors the most. I can really increase the saturation on that. The luminance. So for the pinks, I don't really have any in the scene, so it's not really going to affect that color as much as a this color, which is going to affect my hair. So I can actually make myself redhead, do myself purple hair. If you increase the saturation too much, it might look strange to say the least. But hey, for this example, let's do it. And there's no purple, so it's not going to really change anything. This is messing with a little bit of the shadows, but not much overall. And then if you want to add a little bit extra, you can go into the vignette. I don't think I'm saying that right. Don't kill me. <laughs> and this is kind of a cool little feature. You can make it less round, you can make it oval, you can change the size, you can feather it more, you can make, you can increase the exposure a little bit more, give it highlights, whatever you want. So when you're done editing, just click OK. And this is what I get. So now I have purple hair. So if you're going to be doing something like cosplays, I would highly recommend really learning your color editing because if you're going to be wearing some crazy colored wigs for certain cosplays or even your costumes, you want those colors to pop really well because those clips are what you're selling as cosplay. So I would highly recommend you really learn your color editing softwares if you're going to be doing a lot of cosplay clips. Like just look what you can do with these. And it actually looks pretty nice. So now I have from brunette hair, I have purple hair and my lipstick is more popping. And I have a really cool vignette. <laughs> I don't think I'm saying that right. But yeah, you can even go further by going into the overlays and the filters. 
so let's try and mess with some of this stuff right now. You can add stuff like this cool fire effect and you can extend it too as long as you want. Hi babe, I'm Miss Neil Rose. Now I kind of look like a demon from hell. <laughs> Or you can just add some color leaks or just an overlay completely. So sometimes they'll say there's no parameters. You can't edit the overlay out, but for some of them you can. So let's try, let's try sunshine. Okay, so some of these do have parameters. You can increase or decrease the percentage of some of these factors. So this one gives you a little bright bubble that you can do, and then you can increase the size, you can increase or decrease how bright it is, you can change its position. So yeah, really cool. You can really mess with the filters and the overlays. You can even make it look like old film if I add something like this. You can add static. You can even add static sounds. Again, you can go to YouTube and you can download free to use sounds and you can import them to your scene. Again, you have two layers of sounds plus the one from your clip if you do audio detach. So the audio is right here for this one and then I have some music here and I have a blink layer right here for music. For elements, again, these are just like my watermark. They're just pip overlays and they will go on the pip overlay. And there are actually a limit to how many pips you can have on the scene, I believe. I don't remember how many this is, but you can add quite a few. So again, control X to cut. Control V to paste. Oops, not what I wanted. Sometimes they really don't want to go on the layer that you want it to, which is really annoying. So again, this is just another pip layer. It is, it's just get pre-made and you can stick it wherever you want and then you can also resize it. You can rotate them using this right here. Oh, this one doesn't make it. This one doesn't allow you to do this. Get you can change the animation. Big box that you can store. If you want, you can make it shorter though. You can also go to the Filmora store for more effects, more elements, more filters and transitions and text and everything if you aren't satisfied with the selection that they have once you download your program. When you're happy with your clip, just go to export. And there are a lot of options that you can choose from, WMV, MP4, AVI, Move. The ones that I would recommend using the most would be MP4 and AVI just because MP4 is going to give you a really good quality video and it's highly recommended on a lot of clip sites. So you can just go to settings depending on the video, the camera that you recorded on and it probably would be between 720, 920, 1080 or the 4K. And you can export it for best quality or good quality. Uh, keep the frame rate at 60 frames per second unless your camera records at a different frame rate. Usually don't mess with these other settings. Just the resolution. And if you want it best, better, or good. And then you just hit OK. 
after you have it named, of course, and your save to directory is chosen. And if you want to export it as an AVI, this would actually make your file the smallest. I actually enjoy using AVI files for my Dropbox because my Dropbox is limited on space and AVI will export it to smaller files for you. So there you have it, a basic guide tutorial on how to use Filmora. And if you want to check out different programs as well, I highly recommend Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and to help you make your watermarks and some other art for your clips, you can try Photoshop. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you liked it, please give a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn the notifications on down below, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.